In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. No. Okay, you can do this. Just ignore the statues. They're not demons. It's fine. You got this. You got this. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're not gonna come alive, right? Right? You're all just standing and chilling, right? Right? It's fine. This is fine. Just a few demons. It's fine. Oh cool, they reflect in that. That's that's cool, that's cool. This is fine. I'm fine. It's fine. Dude, I hate working night shift. They got me cleaning up all this broken glass. Nope. Mm -mm. Boss! It's been a while since we had actual creepy videos on this channel, and some of these were pretty good, but it gave me a couple of ideas. For example, imagine having a museum that is a museum of living art that didn't necessarily scare you, but every once in a while it might. I think that would be pretty funny. What? Dude, I don't... What? I'm not seeing it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, what is that? What is that thing? This is history right here. Don't tell me that's a Yeti. I mean, the reactions seem kind of genuine, but it's really hard to tell with kids, especially nowadays. I think that might have just been either one of their friends walking through the woods or someone walking through the woods. But it's kind of scary if that's the case, because those kids probably should not be so excited over something that could be very scary. It could definitely be a stranger out there. Yeah, my goodness. What is this? Like a siphonophore? Yep. Wow. All the way white? Oh, how cool. What? Let me. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, that's awesome. I can't believe that's a living thing. <laughs> of the body looks different from the latter. So, for those of you viewing, we think this might be a siphonophore. I'm taking, like, crazy frame grabs right now. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Oops, just putting on the brakes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I bet you that thing would sting bad if you would... Sting? Uh-huh. If you got touched by that back portion? Yeah. So the siphonophores, if this is what we're seeing, is... How big an... is it? Do you have any estimation? Maybe about 20 wiffle balls. Yeah. <laughs> 15. Is that what the back end of it's supposed to look like? Or is it hurt? No, I think this is... It's full wide? It's supposed to be that way. Wow. That's amazing. I thought it was an old tire. Yeah, I thought it was like a plastic BFC bag or something. Usually, uh, the best known of these siphonophores are the is a what? Portuguese man-of-war, and that's actually much longer than whatever we're seeing right now. 
I'll tell you what, if I ever made it on YouTube for whatever reason and people wanted to take me down under the ocean or maybe even up into space, I'm down because I love underwater exploration. I think it's extremely fascinating. It is extremely scary, but this was a this was really neat to me. I really enjoyed this because it's just such alien looking creatures down there that I would just be so fascinated to see all of it. And honestly, this just looked like a really big blue sea slug to me. I'll put up an image here so you can see what a sea slug looks like, but this was like times 100 the size. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily call that amazing Bigfoot footage, but it was something. It definitely was something there. It, to me, it looked like a gorilla suit. It looked like maybe someone in just a gorilla suit. I don't think that that was Bigfoot. Maybe it was, but I don't think so. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video, and I make a video like this pretty much every day. There's what they call Omicron configuration, where the craft is using one generator, uh, or Delta configuration, where it's utilizing all three. Delta configuration would be for space travel. Essentially, the craft will tilt up on its side, focus the three gravity generators to a single point, and move through space that way. And as opposed to what we're used to, for instance, a plane, once it's in the air, we envision thrust or some force coming out the back of it to push it forward, the crafts work completely opposite of that, is once they're hovering in the air, they'll swing the gravity, two remaining gravity generators up in front of them and create a distortion, essentially a downhill. And the craft rolls downhill for infinity. That's why they look goofy when they fly around at low speed. The gravity field around the Earth is not completely constant and stable, depending on the minerals and density of the Earth underneath it. So its low speed mode is is kind of unstable for the most part. This is pretty interesting. I've watched some of Lazar's stuff in the past. I do find what he has to say about UFO craft extremely interesting because what he says is pretty convincing as far as maybe the mechanics and how they work. I don't know for certain. I'm not a rocket engineer, so I don't know how the physics work for this, but it was definitely an interesting listen. And I'm going to probably watch a little bit more of his stuff in the future for sure. I'm out searching for rocks in my favorite creek. And look at this. I think I got a piece of petrified wood. I think I can just pull it out here. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Well, it might not look like it. But on this side, you can definitely tell it's petrified wood. Also, what is that? Oh, look at that. I don't even know. But look at that. Oh, that's totally petrified wood. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, no way. That is so cool. That's, um, I think that's considered opalized wood, but you can see there it's like agatized or opalized. Wow, that's a nice big piece there. That's awesome. That's a sweet find. Maybe I'll cut that actually. That is cool. This is pretty interesting because if that was a piece of petrified wood that has basically turned into a rock, then that kind of makes it a little bit more believable that mountains and stuff like that may have been once giants that are petrified and just turned into stone. I, I like this theory and where this could go. I'm still on the fence if giants were a real thing or not and they are turned into stone, but this was pretty cool.
I seen that last clip before a very long time ago. So I don't really know if this is real, but I do like the idea of exploring caves and catacombs and underwater surfaces with different types of drones. And I'm hoping that we start utilizing that more often because it just makes more sense to do that. But what do you guys think? You think we should explore like the pyramids and things like that with drones? I think that would be a good idea personally. I've never heard of an actual golden reptilian statue found in the tomb of Egypt, so I'm not sure if this is real either. Uh, but if that's the case, if they really found something that looked like that, they need to do like actual studying on that statue. Who's to not say it's just an encased alien in stone or a petrified alien? The beings, they're called Ebens, extraterrestrial biological entities. Um, so the Eben was there and it had this sort of kind of black rectangular box. And it was used, so the, they didn't have to speak verbally like we are. It was kind of telepathic, but augmented with this technology. And it went back and forth that way. Now the human was just receiving it, but very clear. And then this even was receiving it, probably innately, but assisted. So I call this consciousness assisted technology, CAT. And then the reverse, technology-assisted consciousness, where the technology can help project your remote viewing capability. It goes both ways. I find this really fun because I often think that aliens are utilizing some kind of technology to show themselves, or maybe even hologram technologies that show the aliens to us. I would not think that aliens would actually make themselves vulnerable. If they're such an intelligent species, I just cannot find them coming to Earth and sacrificing their own being just because they wanted to study us. They have to have different technology to actually be here. And what we're seeing is just either androids or some form of machine that the aliens have created for them to basically communicate with us because why would they sacrifice their body and self to try to communicate with us like that just to me doesn't seem like an intelligent thing so you're going to take your quartz crystal and you're going to place it into your duct tape you're going to want to go back and watch that whole video but i'm actually trying this out right now and as you can see i have taped three clear quartz crystals along the main uh, cord I guess to my electrical panel here especially if you live in Canada last month alone we hit a polar vortex and we had minus 50 temperatures so our bill last month was over $800 it, it is absolute ridiculousness and I mean nobody should be paying that much for for heat or anything as far as I'm concerned however I'm gonna try this out and see if it works now it's not as cold here right now however I still think I should be able to tell a difference if I compare it to previous months with relatively the same amount of temperature so I'll keep you posted but let me know in the comments if any of you have actually tried this with clear quartz crystal clear quartz has a certain frequency to it so why wouldn't it have the power to change the outcome of my monthly bills I am curious though to see if there is a positive outcome to it because I think that's an interesting concept. I just think it needs to be done a little different. Instead of wrapping the crystals around the outside with tape, why not wrap them with copper wire instead to help a better conductivity? It's dangerous though. So please, if anyone is doing this kind of stuff, be careful because that is high voltage that can really mess your life up. Bro, Damn, they better not come get me. 
Hell no, you should have seen that shit. Before I got my phone out, that shit was... Hey, that was pretty interesting, actually. I'm not sure what that was. I don't think that was a satellite pattern or plane pattern. Maybe drone, but I don't think so. It's really hard to tell. It kind of reminds me of a comment that I received from a subscriber. They said when they see lights like that in particular in the sky, they think that it's like a form of travel, like a train basically. Like there's a train up there in space of extraterrestrials traveling through space in train. And if you see sporadic UAPs, those are just the free drivers like taxis and stuff like that. I thought that was a pretty fun comment. You remember the crash and being blasted with shattered glass. You awaken, but not into reality, but in the void of space. You. I'm not 100% sure what this video was trying to show. I don't know if it was the craters or what exactly. There's no audio to it, so I'm adding my own audio to it. Um, but it really, I love seeing the moon super up close. I cannot wait to get a high-powered telescope or a high-powered camera because I'm definitely going to be taking shots of the moon. I want to see Saturn. I want to see Mars. I want to see it all, I, at least as close as I can. All right, my friends, the sun is putting on a show today. We got a rainbow up top. I don't know how that happens. <laughs> we have the whole halo all the way around, right? It's pretty standard these days. But then we have the sun dog over here. And look how freaking bright that sun dog is to the point where there's a ray of sunlight that shoots out like across the freaking sky. Look how far that, that sun ray goes out from that sun dog. I've never seen that before. I mean, we get these halos almost every day now. We get these sun dogs way more than we used to, which are always fun to see. I've never seen one with that little light jet, that light ray going like that, you know? So a full halo, two sun dogs, and somehow a rainbow up in space there, the stratosphere. I don't know, guys. It's cool, though. <laughs> Hope everyone's having an awesome day. Peace. I have also been seeing a lot of halos around the sun and the moon, more than what I've ever seen in my life. I, it just seems like the past, I want to say at least three years, it just seems like I've seen the halo around the sun and the moon way more. A lot of people say that that halo around the sun is actually a planet behind the sun. Normally people call it Planet X or Nibiru. I'm not quite sure if that's the case, but another great reason why I want a telescope because I would aim that bad boy up there with a solar lens and see what's back there because that's the time to have a solar lens, especially when you have those beams of light. I think you would be able to see that so much better if you actually had a proper lens to see what that is because there's got to be a way to debunk that or really see past the sun to see what that is, if it is anything. This happened. I'm sorry. What is that? There's a passenger on the plane, huh? looks out the window, grabs the phone. This was filmed in June. The traveler sees that, an object apparently changing shapes in what? seconds. What? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> is it a shape-shifting object? Is it Bezos? Is it Branson? What is it? Is it a UFO? Mel, go for I, it. What do you see? I have yeah. no... Okay, I'm looking at this for the first time. I want it to be surprised. Whoa! Whoa. What's that? No way! Okay. Oh, that's crazy. So no, man. I do not know what that was. I, I have not a clue. The reaction of the newscast and everything is pretty good. To me, I always wonder, you know, there's so much to this universe that we still don't know. 
What if there's creatures up in the sky that's just living that we have no clue exist? You can call them angels, you can call them interdimensional species, aliens, but what if in our atmosphere there's like aquatic life that lives up in the atmosphere? I think that would be pretty neat. And I'm wondering if that's the case nowadays because who's to say it's not? So wait, you mean to tell me that President Nixon was able to communicate with the moon in 1960 from his Oval Office landline and would have like zero interruptions? You know, when you start looking into this, you start getting more questions than answers. So how was the call made? How do you call the moon? Simply, the call went from the Oval Office in Washington, D.C. to Houston, where it was routed into space via mission control through the capsule communicator or CAPCOM. What's a Capcom? I'm over here trying to find the, the means to it, and I find out about a Capcom. A Capcom acronym of uh, Capsule Communicator comes from the Project Mercury when, when the original space shuttles were all capsule-shaped. NASA understood that it is essential for all communication with NASA astronauts to be filtered through one single person in NASA. What? A Capcom's job is to listen to all the information about the mis mission from every console in the room, hear what the flight director wants the crew to know, and then turn it into words the crew will understand and then decide when best to tell them. Capcom is also the crew trusted agent on the ground to fight battles and argue in their steed. This role is normally filled with an experienced astronaut or someone who works closely with astronauts since they're familiar with the vehicle systems. Because of course you need someone familiar with all of that, right? Now, how, how did they communicate with them? The transponder was their only link to mission control and transmitted all voice and video communication, spacecraft statuses, mission data, distance, the astronauts, biomedical data, and emergency communications. So wait a minute, you're telling me that the transponder, which was developed by NASA, is the only link between mission control and them and the moon. And all of the information comes through the transponder, okay? And there's only one person that can communicate with the crew. Now, I was under the, you know, understanding that, you know, they... The people talked to everybody. It wasn't when you said, hey, mission control, everybody in the room was hearing it, but there was not. No, that's just what we heard because that's how they showed us. It was communicated through one person. One. So so everybody's like, well, how did they fool everybody? Well, because they used one transponder, which all data flowed through, and they trusted that that came from space, and they communicated through one person. The transponder also used S-band radio waves. So you mean to tell me the unified S-band system, which was you know, tracking communication system developed for the Apollo program by NASA. You mean to tell me that those radio waves could beam through the 30,000 mile of the Van Allen belt, which temps are all, I mean, I'm hot, sun hot, okay? And it could beam through that and another 200,000 miles to the moon and bounce back and deliver it to a landline to Nixon with literally a very, very, very slight delay in timing. Very, I mean, almost instant. The moment that they said that they were ready on the moon, Mission Control's like, okay, it was an instant. So you mean to tell me that you were able to send S-band radio waves through a 30,000 mile Van Allen belt, which radiation was off the charts, and then to the, you know, another 200,000 miles to the moon, and it come back with zero delay, and here we are. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? freaking airplane flies over my house and I have no internet. Oh, but it's a satellite. No, it's a transponder that was created by NASA. Okay. And everything was went through the transponder. So NASA created a system, put it in there and everything was filtered through that system. Okay. And everybody believed it because only one person communicated with the whole crew up there anyway. So you're telling me that, that not all of these people in this building could not have been fooled by that. Are you, you're serious. You're telling me that the phone call that he had could have been with zero interruptions that quick from a landline he, routed to NASA and to the moon and back with like almost zero delay. You tell me that's possible. Please, please make that one make sense. This was a pretty good video. I did look up the moon landings and if there was a delay in the audio and from what I'm reading online, there was actually a delay more than what she was saying. There was a 3.5 to three second delay between the moon and earth, according to what the internet says in the articles. With that being said, do I believe we went to the moon? Yes, but not what NASA and the governments have shown us. I truly think 
all of that footage from us landing on the moon to the moonwalk. I think all that was fake. I think that was faked to give us the illusion that we've landed on the moon, even though we have, but it was way too difficult to showcase the landing. Even though science is amazing and everything, we do have technical problems today that does not quite add up with landing on the moons to truly demonstrate what's up there in space. And they're keeping what's up there in space a secret for their own advantages and gains. Just my personal theory on it. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys think space is fake completely. And I'm cool with that because I haven't seen proof otherwise to say it's not. Oh my god, I cannot believe that this is actually happening. Are we this close to genuinely finding alien life out there? Right, so a lot of stuff has been happening recently. Now NASA have come out and said that they have found 85 new planets that could sustain and habit life. Now does that mean there's life already there? Who knows, but stick around because there's one thing that could mean that 100% is. Experts from the University of Warwick have been studying NASA's data, including the NASA team, looking into their satellites and everything as well. Now, of course, I'm sure you know about NASA's James Webb Telescope, the $10 billion telescope which can see things ridiculously far away, and we've had some insane photos taken with this thing. Now, the planets that these scientists have discovered range in size, from around 11,000 miles all the way up to the biggest being 350,000 miles. Now, just to put that into context, Earth's diameter is only 8, thousand miles. So think about that compared to 350,000, like what? There has already been over 5,000 exoplanets discovered and of course no one knows if alien life does exist on these or if it could, but these planets they found now are apparently actually habitable, that we could move there one day, although they're, you know, not just down the road exactly, are they? Now what makes these planets interesting though is that apparently they are literally the perfect distance away from the local sun, meaning that you could live there, it's not too hot, but it's also not too cold. Now, this is the crazy part, because one of these planets scientists were looking at and found something insane. So they noticed something literally coming out of the atmosphere, and obviously you'd think, what is that? Now, they looked into it, and the chemical that came out of it was dimethyl sulfoxide. Now, you're probably thinking, what's the big deal? It's probably just a chemical, you know, gas produced on the planet or something. Well, what produces dimethyl sulfoxide? Wood. What's wood found on? Trees. And what do trees make? Oxygen. Oh my god. So, there is a chance that there is literal oxygen on this planet, which means there could already be life there. Yeah, another thing that I'm not sure if I want to believe from NASA or not. I think that when they created, like, the Hubble telescope and the James Webb telescope, they have to give us this information to make it seem like the value of how much these telescopes cost in production. I mean, we're talking about billions and billions of dollars they need to come out with evidence that shows us, hey, there's something out there. It keeps us intrigued. It keeps us from questioning why we're spending tax dollar on the on this system. And I don't buy it necessarily. I, If there is planets out there with life, I can definitely be down with that. And I do believe that. I do not believe that we are the only planet that has life on it. Even if God created this planet, I believe that if there is a God, he created multiple planets for us to one day probably be together once we can accept everything that there is to accept. With that being said, I would love to see these planets that have the life forms and different oxygen levels and things like that because there's got to be some pretty crazy looking stuff on these planets that I'm ready for. I would love to experience what it would be like to be on these planets. So I'm very hopeful that there is other life out there past the firmament, past space time. I really hope that there is life out there somewhere. And even in the industry, I used to look out into the crowd and I promise, I know you're going to think I'm lying to you. I used to look out and see faces change. Everything felt demonic. Spiritually. One day we bought a bar and we just talking, we just talk about life and just deep shit. And then it was like three broads, they came. These bitches had on all black. These bitches were prettier than fucking ah! It was like they had that look like the Kardashians. These bitches, ah! And that shit ain't nothing look nothing. That shit ain't look Enhanced the natural shit, look all natural. So he like, so he nudged me like, 
So I look, I said, ooh, yeah, nigga, it's on. Mm-hmm. So we chilling, we drinking. I start my bullshit. What y'all drinking? Get these bitches wherever they want. Double them bitches up. And when they finish, give them another one. So we on our bullshit. We just drinking now. Me and him just talking like, because we already know. They be like, I'll be over to your left. You know, you read that energy. So I was like, they ain't going nowhere. Keep these bitches drinking. So me and Pac still talking. Out of my fucking periphery, nigga. I, look, I can't make this up, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell anybody this kind of shit. So I'm giving this shit to you exclusive. Check this one out. So out of my periphery, you know, you see certain shit through your periphery. So I look, and it looked like some, like the bitch was moving, like, like, but it looked like something else, like some, some horror movies, nigga, listen, it looked real bugged out, so I looked again, bitch was regular pretty, <laughs> I turned my head, I see some shit moving, I was like, so I said to myself, am I high, because me and this nigga been smoking some good shit, <laughs> I drink, I looked again, the bitch face kind of like, Disfigured, nigga. Now, hey, 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 hey. All I know is when I saw that motherfucking movie, Devil's Advocate, I was like, I see that shit. The bitch was like that. So, nigga, <laughs> it was a scene in there like that. Nigga, I went pop, nigga. Uh, 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 I looked again, and the bitch face was regular. I looked again. Well, and it was like, the bitch was switched back. It was like she was morphing. I looked again. I said, yo, pop, get the fuck out of here. It was like. What's the matter, man? <laughs> you said, we're going to bring the bitches. I said, we're not bringing our bitches nowhere with us. There's a little bit of self-thought that bleeds into reality. I know that sounds weird and it probably doesn't make any sense. But just like the individual that was at the bar and he's seen the three women come in, he himself was doing a kind of skeevy thing. You see three decent looking women. There's probably other women in the bar that you could have also had this opportunity with, but you picked these particular women because you were, uh, what's the word, lustful over these women. Maybe when you have a few drinks, you're, you're a little high, your conscious is thinking to yourself, is this the right thing to do? And that is what makes him see these demonic forces. That's just the theory. Like, you have to have a good conscience. If you have a bad conscience, things can sink into your mind to give you a negative effect. And that could have been the case for both of these scenarios. Leave a comment down below on what you guys think, because I could be completely wrong and it doesn't even make any sense to you. But to me, that's kind of how I see reality. You know, if you think bad thoughts, even if they are good for you, they're not necessarily the right thoughts, that could lead you to see bad things. So just let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. And with that being said, have a good day.